you know, I got this opportunity to go to South Africa with my friend Rob Witten, our friend Rob Witten, um, to go dive with coelacanths, which of course is any ichthyologist sort of holy grail opportunity to do. I mean, it's the most amazing fish. And if anyone watching this doesn't know the story of the coelacanth, check it out because it's really, really cool. When I talk to people, I tell them it's when it was discovered in the 1930s, it was more or less the equivalent of, of uh, finding a Tyrannosaurus Rex walking around in the jungle somewhere. I mean, this was truly a thing thought to have been extinct for 70 million years, only known from the fossil record. Suddenly there it was alive. So this fish is very mysterious, very cool, very interesting. And it turns out much bigger than I ever imagined it was. Yeah, so that true. was my first, first impression seeing it was like, you know, I'd seen them in museums before. And usually they look like a big grouper. You know, they're like three or maybe four feet long, maybe, you know, about this big around big fish but you know that's that's my impression but these things were easily two meters long probably more and this big around <laughs> like like a giant like a giant grouper kind of grouper goliath grouper type of grouper huge 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 just massive fish and that part i wasn't expecting but we had done dive after dive after dive after dive after dive and the film crew was getting very nervous the producer was like when are you guys going to find a coelacanth and i'm like whenever it finds us i mean we, we we're doing what we're supposed to be doing is if it's not there it's not there we can't you know conjure it out of nothing but on the 13th dive and in fact i worked it out the 13th minute of the 13th dive is when we encountered one for the first time and that moment you know you'll see the video a little backstory to the video if you show that little clip of us sort of seeing it for the first time is that the national geographic folks had asked me to narrate the dive so that they could have audio of everything i was seeing so they just, you know, narrated and all those 12 dives where we hadn't seen it. I sort of rehearsed in my mind what I would say, you know, some glorious, wonderful fit to be shown on National Geographic thing that I would say when I first saw it. And so I had that rehearsed in my mind. And well, you can watch the video and see what reality was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to play maybe this uh, later on with the yeah, audio we, on. We've got it playing now. Yeah, now the audio, I, we, we were showing it without the audio, without the audio on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I yeah, you got to hear the audio because there's a couple of points in that video where the subtitles don't, don't match. match. Don't match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> and how deep was it where you where you found these guys? I was about 400 feet, 120 meters or so. Okay. Um, we saw them on two separate dives. And there's one moment where I actually got to reach out and stroke its tail as it came by, which was a very nerve wracking thing to do, because if I spooked it, its tail is like, you know, there's half a meter diameter, right. maybe more, wow. three quarters of a meter diameter paddle. And if he spooked, I would have gone tumbling. You're right. But he didn't spook. He just glided right on past my fingertips. So well, what's amazing is how calm keep. they are. Yeah, it's very calm. Yeah. yeah. So, well, they're apparently very oily and very distasteful. So nothing really tries to eat them. So they don't have predators. So they don't need to be afraid of anything except, you know, I guess we crowded it a couple of times. But uh, I think it's here. Uh, let, let's say now we're gonna listen with the with the audio. It's at the, I think it's at the beginning as you get in there, right? That uh, well, yeah, like... at the very beginning when we first encounter them, there's a little story there. But it starts with us being on top of the ledge and we swim out and go over the ledge to see what's going on down below. Right there we go. Here is that in the ledge. Let's put some volume up. So at this stage, you probably were arriving there, you still didn't realize that, that the fish was there, right? Oh, yeah, I had no idea that that there was there. There are two divers there, and there are... In fact, I thought one of the divers had died. That's what I was worried about. <laughs> Behold! <laughs> <laughs> what a truly I magnificent love, I love creature! The, the... <laughs> So the subtitles reflect what I had intended to right. sort of gloriously say for the National Geographic audience, but I had no control over what came out of my mouth, sort of like the <laughs> Christmas chill video. And what did they end up putting on the uh, on the actual Nat Geo? Did they, I think did they, they have it narrated? Something else. Yeah. They dubbed over something else. In fact, gotcha. I think they had Rob Winton and I record regular audio, which they digitally simulated as being helium. Oh, okay. Something like that, which gotcha. I thought was a bad move, but whatever. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, what we actually said was unfit for. Um, right. 
for Nat Geo. But yeah. we can say I it see. on our YouTube channel. That's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Like uh, we can show like some behind the scenes yeah. of uh, what really is it's happening. Well, here. there is just a little behind the scenes story about that video. So Peter Tim was our guide, and he was diving open circuit, which means he had no margin for error for his breathing supply. And uh, this was at the very end. Like we had planned these these eleven minute dives, and because the reason for the eleven minutes is if we went longer, our decompression would last a long time. And the way the currents work there is that if you decompress for longer than two and a half or three hours the boat ends up in really nasty water. So you need to keep your decompression short, which means you need to keep your bottom time short. But in this case, we'd already overextended our limit by a couple of minutes. And I that ledge that you saw me swim over, minutes before that, I'd looked over and I'd see Peter Tim's bubbles coming up. And I'm like, okay, let's just wait for Peter. He's on his way up. He can't stay down there forever. So we're gonna be going up. So Rob and I waited up there. And then I turned around and Rob and I kind of looked at fish and then I turned back and the bubbles were gone, oh. just absolutely gone. And several people had died diving in this same area, trying to see coelacanths. And with such little margin for error, you know, the first thought I had was, oh my God, Peter's gone unconscious. So as I was coming over the ledge, I wasn't expecting to see a coelacanth. I was expecting to see an unconscious diver on the bottom. And I was going through my head, you know, how am I going to deal with this situation? And then I could, it took me a minute for my brain to recalibrate. Wait, there's a diver, but he's not dead. And he's got his lights on and he's taking a picture of something. And you know, that, that was kind of what was going through my head was a dramatic mental shift from preparing myself to deal with somebody who had died underwater to seeing the coolest thing I'd ever seen underwater. Wow. Incredible. Amazing.